Now let us discuss about the different types of lasers. Here we have there are three different types of lasers. They are number one solid straight laser, number two gas lasers, number three semiconductor laser. Now let us discuss about one by one here. Coming to the first, which is the solid state laser. Now here, in the solid state laser, we take example as the ruby laser. Okay. These solid state lasers, they are optically pumped using xenon flash lamps. One such xenon flash lamp is equipped in the working phenomenon of the ruby laser. Now let us try to explain about the construction and working of a ruby laser based on its uh, characteristic property of optical pumping. Now here we have the ruby laser. Let us construct this ruby laser now. This ruby laser consists of an helical shaped tube over here. Just like your uh, discharge tube in the same sense here. It has a small opening here which we am indicating it with a red mark. Here we have one more opening. It has two mirrors. Right? These are the two reflecting mirrors. We have a ruby rod inside it. Obviously about 30 centimeters in uh, its length. Right. Next we have an helically shaped xenon flash lamp here. This is a helically shaped xenon flash lamp. The ends of both of them, they are connected to an external circuit which consists of a key, a plug key which indeed is connected to a capacitor and then this is the other end. Next, this here we have a battery. So this is obviously the construction of your ruby laser. Now here the width of this one is obviously around 0.5 centimeters and its length is about 30 centimeters say around 10 to 30 centimeters. So this is the ruby rod. Okay. So this is the flash lamp. These are the mirrors. This is provision for the coolants. Coolants here which will be provide necessary cooling for the apparatus. This is the ruby rod. Mirror. This is partially reflecting mirror. This is fully reflecting mirror. Okay. This is your laser beam. This is a switch. This is the capacitor. 
this is the battery eliminator okay so we are giving a clear description of a ruby laser here this is uh, what we explain it in the construction part now this ruby laser was the first material used by T. H. Maiman for demonstrating lasing action and this is a three level solid state laser the ruby crystal or the ruby rod is made up of aluminum trioxide that is Al2O3 and Cr3 plus that is Al2O3 that is aluminum oxide and Cr3 plus ions which are about 0.05% by weight for the crystal and are added as dopants or impurities. You can say it anyway. Now, there are three main sections involved in this uh, construction of your solid state laser that is the ruby laser. So, the three main sections of ruby laser are one an active working material an active working material number two resonant cavity number three the exciting system. Now, these are the three cases. Now, an active working material. So, here we are selecting about a cylindrical rod or a ruby rod, which is obviously 0 0.5 centimeters in width and 10 to 30 centimeters long. Now, that will act as the active working material. Now, coming to the next case, which is resonant cavity. Resonant cavity is provided by the tube which we are taking which is equipped with the partially and fully reflecting mirrors on either side of that particular tube glass tube rather so that will provide about the resonant cavity and the exciting system exciting system means what here we are making use of a helically shaped xenon flash lamp which will act as the exciting system now once that flash lamp is supposed to be on and it is incident on the material then the atoms in the ruby rod will excite, which will be involved in the lasing action. So we say that there are three main sections involved in the working of a ruby laser, which is an active working material, a resonant cavity and the exciting system. So obviously these are the three sections. Now coming to the working part. Now let us discuss about that in a few steps here. First one is once the power is switched on the xenon flash lamp the xenon flash lamp excites and the light is allowed to fall on the ruby rod that is the first side coming to the second case now the optical energy excites the chromium atoms in the ruby crystal 
from ground state to excited state. Ground state to excited state means it is nothing but your simulated absorption. So it, it will that optical energy which is falling on the ruby crystal will excite the chromium atoms present in the ruby rod so that they move from the ground state to the excited state. Now the remaining energy heats up the apparatus which can be cooled by the cooling arrangement. So we have provided two passages over there which is acting as a coolant there. So because of the higher amount of light that has been flashed with respect to the ruby rod, so lot amount of heat gets involved within the tube which may destroy the apparatus. So indeed to cool that apparatus we are providing the coolants. So that is what we are saying here. The remaining energy heats up the apparatus which can be cooled by the cooling arrangement. Now the chromium atoms absorb the photons of wavelength 5600 angstrom units from the flash lamp and go to the excited state. Either. Let us see this phenomena in the energy level diagram here. Obviously, this is the highest energy state. Let us name this one as E3. And the chromium atoms initially are present in this state which we call it as energy state E1. These chromium atoms get excited after that instant amount of absorption that is stimulated absorption. They go on and enter into the higher excited state here. In the higher excited state E3, they are going to stay here for about 10 power minus 8 seconds. After losing this amount of a life, they get de-excited to the energy state which is obviously energy state E2. This energy state E2 is what we call it as the metastable state. So here we say that the chromium atoms get to the E3 state stay there for about 10 power minus 8 seconds and and get de excited to the energy state E2 that is the metastable state. In the metastable state, in the metastable state E2, the number of chromium atoms are more than the excited state and their lifetime and their lifetime is 10 power minus 3 seconds. So that is they stay in the metastable state for about 10 power minus 3 seconds, lose their lifetime and then get de-excited to the lower energy state. But before that, between E3 and the E2 states, non-radiative transitions non-radiative transitions takes place. So, in metastable state E2, population inversion is achieved. 
Next, the chromium atoms in the energy state E2 come to the to the ground state that is E1 state by emitting a photon of wavelength lambda is equal to 6943 angstrom units. These chain reactions are repeated by the optical resonator and produces a highly intensified monochromatic highly directional highly directional coherent beam of wavelength lambda equal to 6943 angstrom units so this is the most amount of wavelength of light emitted while using the solid state laser especially your ruby laser so this is the working phenomenon of the production of a laser using our ruby laser let us now discuss about applications of this ruby laser Obviously, there are many applications with respect to this uh, ruby laser. Let us discuss about a few of them here. In this regard, we have the first one. Applications are nothing but the uses. Ruby laser is used in pulsed holography. Number two. It is used in remote sensing. Number three, it is used in ophthalmology. It is used in drilling small areas. So, obviously, these are the four important applications of ruby laser. Now, once the applications are there, there are certain disadvantages we come across while using this ruby laser. They are, we are quoting the disadvantages as well. The disadvantages using this uh, ruby laser are, first of all, its efficiency is very low. Number two, it requires a very high pumping power. And uh, the output power of the laser beam is a pulsed one means uh, there is discontinuity there. There are no continuous amount of beams aboard. Even though the wavelength is on the higher side, it is a pulsed kind of an output what we get from uh, making use of this uh, ruby laser. So obviously these are the this three disadvantages uh, we come across while using this ruby laser. Yeah, overall, its efficiency is on the lower side. So this cannot be considered more for the lasing process to be achieved.